who is first? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, why Lisbon and what are your expectations for Lisbon? First of all, Lisbon because of determination. Uh, there is, as you know, uh, 12 criteria to fulfill uh, in order to qualify for the capital, uh, for the green capital of Europe. And Lisbon started its way uh, beginning of 2010, 2011. So it's been a long way. Uh, huge work has been done. But most importantly, it's also determination and plans for the future. And Lisbon showed very clearly that they're willing to do it right now, right here, and also move fast for the future. This is why Lisbon. Okay. Um, what will happen in Lisbon over the course of the, the, the next year, and uh, what will be the impact be in this, in all, in this challenge of uh, climate change? I, I think most importantly is uh, clean air, clean water, and this is the major commitments Lisbon has made. Uh, moving forward, but uh, also, well, let's not forget, it gives a additional exposure for Lisbon as a city to attract additional tourists and again for citizens, for people of Lisbon to live and uh, enjoy clean parks, uh, spend uh, time with the family near to a clean water and, uh, and of course in the fresh clean air. And mayor said very clearly, you know, you have a river, uh, a few years ago it was uh, dangerous to, to swim now it's uh, with the improving sewage system in a couple of years you will have uh, a possibility to dive in I think it's a it's a great ambition to move forward but of course much more has to be done especially speaking about the mobility mobility has to be the one solving citizens problems to connect from A to B uh, but also it has to be a zero emission and Lisbon has made a, a great move with electric buses uh, Gas-powered buses is a temporary solution, of course, and by 2050, it can be definitely uh, exchanged for a zero pollution. Yeah. Uh, we saw uh, lots of young people here today in this yes. event. Uh, what can their specific yeah. role be? Our young people already did a terrific job. Uh, they were the ones uh, reminding politicians that politicians have to act. They were the ones putting a Green Deal top of the agenda for the European Commission. I think they have to keep being mobilized, they have to keep uh, being vocal and reminding politicians not only in EU level but also regional uh, and uh, national level what are they, their commitments, what they promise to do and to make sure that those promises deliver. And of course everyone can start from themselves uh, looking at their carbon footprint, how then they can change their everyday behavior and I think young people can be role model for all of us. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice next, next one. <laughs> next one. Hello. 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 Shoot. Okay. What, what would be the role of cities in the European Green Deal? Well, I think without cities we can't achieve anything because if you look at um, across Europe, where is the innovation taking place in cities? Where are people with the most talent going to? That's in cities. Where are the biggest problems? Also in cities. And where are the biggest solutions? Also in cities. So the city is sort of the, the nexus where everything comes together. But that's not the whole story because cities will also have to take the responsibility for the development of rural areas. So what I always say to cities, yes, it's good that you take the lead, but look at your surroundings. Who is feeding you? Where do the people live who come to work in your, your cities? Um, how do people you know, enjoy themselves outside of the cities? Where do they go to? To rural areas. So we also need to create a partnership between cities and rural areas. In a moment uh, uh, where the European Union faces a challenge like, the, like Brexit, do you think that the Green Deal can be an opportunity um, for countries to gather around a, a common objective, a common uh, uh, interest? Well, I honestly believe that the Green Deal is Europe's destiny. And I also believe that in the last years, many people in Europe, citizens, have been sort of struggling. What is, what is Europe for? What is our destiny? And I have the feeling, broadly in European society, the idea that we need to transform our society to make it sustainable is supported by many people. And most people know that they can't do this individually in member states, that they need the European Union for this. 
So I believe the Green Deal is really the new sort of destiny for the European Union. And I also believe that most European citizens understand this is something we really need to do. Here today we, we, we heard uh, several calls for the biggest polluters to act. And also in Europe we have uh, big polluters yes. like Poland that, that didn't uh, sign uh, or didn't go on board of the Green Deal yet. Uh, um, do you think that that can be a, a, a problem uh, or not? Well, we should also be honest about the fact that not everybody is in the same position. Portugal has made incredible investments over the last years and now renewable energy accounts for more than 50% of Portuguese energy mix. In Poland, 80% of the energy is still based on coal. So their need for transformation is much more profound and much more expensive than other member states. So when the Polish government asked for some solidarity, I have some understanding for this. But Poland doesn't do this just because of the rest of the world or just because of the rest of Europe. They do this because their own citizens are demanding this, because the air quality in Polish cities is really dismal, is really bad. Can I ask a question? Um, so, like you uh, just said, uh, there are various speeds uh, over yep. the course of, of Europe and, and these uh, implementations. Uh, can we achieve our uh, global goals with these various speeds in the way? Well, I, the only thing I can tell you for sure, and because we did the preparation for this, is that Europe can be climate neutral by 2050. That we can do. And I have the impression also in the conference in Madrid that if we make these plans concrete and we start doing this, we will convince more and more parts of the world to do the same thing, to move in the same direction. So the only thing we can do to make it happen is to start now and to understand that we can do this. We have the technology, we have the capital, we have the willingness to do it, so let's get going. And are events like this fundamental for that change? Fundamental, absolutely fundamental. You know, I don't think everywhere in Europe, uh, Lisbon is on the map as a green city. But now that uh, Lisbon has this title of uh, European uh, green capital, we will see that other cities will you know, be curious. Why is that? What are they doing there? What is happening with sustainable housing? Hey, interesting, they're moving to electric mobility. How are they doing that? So I think it's, it's very important to convince others. About uh, what you were talking about, that not, not every country is in the same starting yes. point, the Just Transition Fund will be fundamental for this. Yes. Uh, is there already a budget? Uh, which countries will be in, will be out? Uh, when can we see more news about the Just Transition Fund? On Tuesday. On Tuesday we will take a decision on this in the College of Commissioners and I hope to be able to present the result uh, uh, in Strasbourg uh, on Tuesday. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Another note on the Conference of the Future of Europe, yes. expectations? Well, I think um, there is a broad willingness in the three institutions, the Council, the European Parliament and the Commission, um, to have a good and long look at what does Europe need, which instruments do we need, what are the urgencies of uh, our citizens. The only message I would have, you know, also with my experience campaigning in Europe for the European elections, is this. Let's talk about the people's problems, not our problems. People are not interested in our problems. They are interested in what we can do to help solve their problems. And I hope the conference will concentrate on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. Thank you all.